Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Kay Cote, and I'm your podcast host here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today on the show, we have Amit and Kadir, founders of Fun Credible. Today, we're going to be talking about their journey to business ownership, challenges, best practices, and share a peek to what it's really like to build and operate a business. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations like this one. Well, welcome Amit and Kadir to the show today. I'd love to hear a little bit about you and your business. Hi, I'm go first? Yeah, just go go ahead first. <laughs> you you're older than me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, my name is Ahmed, and uh, I'm like uh, managing the uh, operations and the sourcing of Pancredible. And I'm a mechanical engineer, and I also did my master's in IT at Endicott College uh, in Beverly. And yeah, I'm Turkish and we're running business in Buda, Texas. So I'm happy to be here. Welcome, welcome. So it's me, Kadir. Uh, my my story is not a lot different than Ahmed. Uh, we, we, since we, we moved here back in 2017, we've been doing, uh, we've had the same, basically the same life. We went to the same school, uh, but in, Back in home, I was an electrical engineer, and then we moved here and did our masters together on IT for uh, for IT, and then um, we found our own company, and then now uh, he does the sourcing and other stuff, and I do the advertising and marketing, um, the sales basically. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, I'd love to dive in. You know, kind of like talk about the business ownership. Are y'all partners and in the business? Yes, we are. We are like half, like co-founder, I would say, like we founded the company together. Awesome. Awesome. And like that, feel free to dive in each of you a little bit into the roles that you are currently playing in the business. Well, it 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 actually keeps changing. Um, so I usually do the advertising part and uh, anything related to sales, like any coupons, any, any campaigns that's running uh, right now. And uh, and I also do the legal side of the business. I mean, when I say legal, like accounting side of the business, uh, well, all the tax related stuff, um, I go out and try to find some capital for the business, which is the probably the hardest part of the of my job. I talk to banks, I talk to accountants, I talk, I talk to a law, lawyer, and I try to sell. So I try to sell to business owners and also the customers. So that's what I do in the business. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm mostly finding the right products for us to launch under our brand. And I also focus on sourcing them through China. We are mainly uh, sourcing items from China. And I was there a couple months ago, by the way, to find the better suppliers and get better deals. And uh, after I find the products, I bring them into the United States. I do the uh, logistics and everything. And after that, I hand it to Kadir. And actually, before that, I also do the listings of uh, and uh, photo shootings and everything of the products. Currently, I'm in Turkey just to do the photo shooting here. And then uh, I hand it to Kadir to launch the product and get the best out of it. So that's how the process goes, actually. Oh, that is really cool. Well, I see the name of your company is Fun Credible, and you're talking about different products. So, what are some of the products that you are selling right now? We are selling incredible fun stuff under our brand. So, mostly we are focusing on the costume accessories and seasonal items. We first started out with uh, Halloween products to sell some costume accessories, and then we expanded our brands to mostly for cowboy hats and beach hats. Now we are targeting all seasons throughout the year. We have some items uh, for Christmas and for other seasons as well. But mostly we are seasonal brand. We are trying to uh, launch products for every possible season to make people happy and bring some fun in their life. Oh, that's really cool. I dig that. I'd like to dive into kind of like what makes your business special. You know, you have these fun products. So who do you primarily serve? Like if I if I were to be in your audience, like how would I know I'd be a good fit for your products? So let me ask you, like, do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Do you celebrate Easter? Do you celebrate uh, Halloween, Christmas? Yeah, yeah. We love the holidays. Well, then, then, then you're our customer. Like <laughs> anyone who, who likes to dress up to an event or like a party or like just just to go out and fun basically or like for a Halloween party you are like 
those people are our customers. So we target all of those people. And Very try good. to bring... Actually, uh, yeah, go ahead. In addition... In addition to that, I've seen one of the case pictures. She had one pink cowboy hat with the fluffy rim. So I'm like, maybe she might be bought this from us because because we sell similar items too. So yeah, you're definitely our customer. Oh, fun. Yes, I do remember that. I do have that hat. I did a promo gig for an event. So they might have gotten them from you guys. So that's really cool. That's like small world, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, we, we sell to 1% of the population in the, in the States every year so you could be if if you are not there and, and probably somebody from that event would be our customer mm -hmm. oh that's really fun i love that as you know looking at this um your, the products you produce like how would you say you your competitors can compare with you in this okay so i compare so uh all of our products like most of them they're they're not like you you buy it once and you use it for like another two three years or four years it's just like one time it's maybe like two times you use it um so most of our competitors they don't really care about the quality uh they just want they just want uh like you know cheap items basically and it doesn't have to be like all cool like all good because mm -hmm. the, con the, the consumer will use it only just one time and then throw it away but we what we do is uh, before we launch anything, uh, we get like 10, 15 samples. We read like at least like a thousand reviews to see like how we can improve the product and how we can differentiate from all of our competitors. So we do an extensive research and then and then Ahmed finds the product and, and make sure that, uh, that they are really good so that we can uh, sh ship it to our customers. So this is like the quality is probably the number one uh, difference wow. that we have with our customers, uh, our competitors, sorry. Mm. And like, what would you say is one thing you wish people knew about your business? That there is like somebody uh, in complaining on behalf of them in the company. Because I complain all the time. Like if I see something wrong, I just like, even if the people are not gonna complain, I complain. I complain to Ahmed and then he complained to our manufacturer and. <laughs> and uh and we make the best like again like we complain for the things they would not even complain so that we try to create the best possible experience and best possible product so that's that's probably the one and one more thing that i i would love every single person to know uh, like sometimes we get like angry messages from customers because for the reasons like for because of the things that are, are outside of our control like a shipping, uh, like something happened during the shipping, and they, they be like with the capital letters, refund my money or something like that. Just I want you to know, I will do every, anything possible to make it right for you. Just, just, just know that I will make it right for you. It's just like just tell me what you need, and I'll, I'll, I'll fix it for you. There's no I'm need to fight with me. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to make your life any harder. It's just, I'll make it easier for you. Just just let me know what you need and I'll fix it. I'm just like reading your message like with a smile and I, I'm just trying to see like, you know, how we can make it better for you, make it right for mm -hmm. you. Just we, we will fix it. Just uh, ask it kindly, nicely and know that we are ready to make it right for you. Oh, that is good to know. I, I dig that a lot. You know, this kind of leads me right into marketing, actually, the, you know, like marketing, which is kind of something it's like very vital to businesses out there and, you know, that communication within marketing. So I'm always curious to, you know, what successful businesses are doing and um, what would you say you're doing for your marketing strategies right now that are working the best for you? Well, there's like, we tried a couple of different things. We, we did uh, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, uh, or Google ads. And because we are mostly uh, online and we, we just started moving towards more retail stores. Um, so like probably the like Facebook, uh, Instagram and Google, we were not really successful. Our most successful advertising attempt was the one that we did inside Amazon. Mm -hmm. That was the, 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 that brought us the most success and most money I would say. But now we are focused, now that we are focused on the retail stores now, uh, we have our catalog and we opened up a pair store um, that works really well. Uh, but mm -hmm. outside of that is like as marketing, 
anything outside of Amazon didn't really work out well for us yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, so uh, are you doing anything to like track your, uh, the people you're working with like CRM wise? And if you are, what do you prefer using? Ahmed? Uh, what is that again? Can you repeat it one more time? Sorry, Kate. Uh, what approach have you taken to like track your leads? Like, are you using a CRM or are you? Oh, like... oh, you, you, you were asking for the leads. I told you were asking about the uh, the people that works in the company. How do we track their uh, efficiency or like performance? Oh so yeah, I, no, like... your leads. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, again, like, uh, so we we don't get any leads. Well, again, like anything outside of. Amazon didn't really work out well, so there's no there's mm -hmm. no success in there. Um, but in Amazon, we just like you know look at the reports and everything. But there's no like like a typical leads in inside of Amazon because every customer that mm -hmm. there is, it's it's Amazon customers. So we don't we don't really get the leads. We just uh, look at the data of like the keywords and everything. But mm -hmm. outside of that, there's no like uh, outside of Amazon for us yet. Okay. Well, we've spent some time now focusing on your business and I, I'd like to share a little bit about your, each of your journeys, like kind of deep dive into that. So for each of you, why did you choose to go into business for yourself as opposed to choose for working for somebody else? And like, what was that transition like for you? For me, I think that comes from my father because uh, since I was young, he was always running his business. He met, like he had restaurants and he was always running his own business. So he was my role model when I, when I was young. So I think growing up with him, like grow me that way because after graduating from my college, I started to work as a mechanical engineer for one year. And even when I was working in the uh, industry, I was always thinking like, okay, how can I start my business? What would be, what should be my next step? Like, even it was so hard to do it in that business, but within one year, I started to think that way. But about uh, uh, selling on Amazon and starting our own business, the idea of like the reason we wanted to get into this business was because uh, the idea of selling on Amazon, like even if you ask people who like had an idea, like, it sounds like super simple when you first hear it because people say, okay, you find the right product and then you source it from China and then you send it to Amazon warehouses and that's it. Boom. You just get the sales and you make profit out of it. So this process sounded so simple and smart for us because you don't do hands-on job a lot because you're only on the computer and you just like manage all the operations. Uh, and if you can work, make the process work out well, then you're good to go. So that made us to decide actually to get into the Amazon business. But other than that, I think uh, I never thought of my, I never saw, saw myself like working a nine to five job because I was always had this idea on my mind to run my business. Like, uh, yeah, that's what I can tell. Mm, yeah. So for me, it's like, for me, it would be the freedom that we get uh, from being a business owner. Because uh, once you, for the for the first couple years, it's not you don't really get any uh, freedom because you just started up, so it's just like it takes a lot of work. You have to work probably way more than a nine to five job. But right after that, one once you have a team and something like a system that's that's running up and running, so then 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 you can travel the world, do the things that you like to do, and everything. So there's like too much of uh, freedom and benefit that comes from being a business owner that mm -hmm. I will probably not be able to get with a 95 job. Well, after after COVID, it, it kind of changed a little bit. People started like, you know, working remotely, but um, again, like we, the freedom that we receive being a business owner is, is what, 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 what got me actually into business. Mm, those are really great answers and very true. It's, um, it's one of those things too. Yeah. You can like create that freedom for yourselves and, uh, so I'd love to hear about a roadblock. Especially, um, oh, yeah. Can I Go add ahead. one more comment over there? Yeah. And especially if you have a business partner that you can like you can get along with. It's amazing because like see, like we are making an interview right now. He's in Texas. I'm in Turkey. Like I have my freedom. And like three months ago, he was in Turkey having fun with his family for two months. Like I don't think any nine to five jobs, if you're not working remotely, can allow you to go for a vacation or something for two months. But mm -hmm. we have this flexibility as long as the other partner is working and covering all your like things that you need to do. It is really uh, amazing to have your own job. <laughs> 
Partners are great. That is awesome. Well, I'd love to hear about each of you an experience that you've had within like starting this company that like presented a roadblock or a challenge that you had to face and you overcame it. Um, do you have something you'd like to share? Yeah, actually, uh, the challenge is when we were starting, we didn't. So we launched the company at the end of 2020, right? Uh, we didn't have too many too much challenges because we started small, but then we started to grow fast and we wanted to grow aggressively as much as we can. And that actually, uh, like I recently finished the book of uh, Phil Knight's uh, The Shoe Dog. Uh, the uh, Phil Knight is the founder of Nike, and mm -hmm. he just uh, I just read his book, and he was challenging the same difficulties that we are having right now about the finding the uh, enough capital to grow as much as you want. But you know, uh, when, when he was trying to do that, banks were concerned about the company's rapid, rapid expansion and the increasing of amount of money borrowed. So we are also facing these difficulties because last year we, we did okay, but not as great as we expected. But this year we just wanted to grow again, like aggressively, but like since like the money we borrow from the financial institutes are increasing, they're like, okay, you got to slow down. Like we don't want you to go so fast. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the challenges that we face, like finding enough capital so we can go as, as fast as we want. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the challenge I would say. Yeah, definitely. Do you have something that you would like to add as a challenge? I, I think well, one more challenge that I can tell is it, it, I wouldn't say it's a challenge, but um, so we are a seasonal brand, right? We have a lot of Halloween items. So um, in our business, in, in our business model, we get the items somewhere around like April, May. And then he has to do, Kadir has to do the advertisement and marketing mm -hmm. uh, somewhere around August and September so we can get the best out of the season in October. But, you know, in uh, September and in August, we don't make any profit. And because we keep our prices as low as we can and we make the advertisement as 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 aggressively as we possibly can because uh, we are selling online. So we want to show up on the right pages on the right time. So like whenever he just goes to the office and comes back to home, I can see the fear on his face. Like he's like, we might be go bankruptcy right now because we are going so bad. <laughs> So this is the second like issue that he was facing the most. Yeah, I was, I was, I, I faced it all by myself. <laughs> he oh, just, man. <laughs> well, he he did his part. He he brought the item, so like he's he's probably done with his work now, and it's yeah. all my thing to sell them. And then I spend a lot of money, don't get much return at that time, and then I like. I feel really bad and sad that and ask myself like, is it is it gonna work? this year or are we going to go bankruptcy or like what's mm -hmm. going to happen it's mm -hmm. just like a, too much of a challenge mm -hmm. um, because like from the beginning Kay, you really took more risks than you shouldn't be taking because like everybody wants to grow stable but you know when you're first starting off you don't want to you're you're a small startup and you want to grow as fast as you can and it's always risky and like challenging so that's the that's why we were having those moments where we were like oh mm -hmm. is it like going all the way down or we're going to go up because like seasonality makes it crazy hard actually. Oh yeah, definitely. That makes a lot of sense. Well, as you continue to, you know, tackle these challenges, I'd love to hear like, where do you see the business going in the next three to five years? Where do you want to grow to? Okay, so in this, uh, for this question, uh, we want to expand our brand uh, as much as we can to more retail stores. And like, because we want to increase sales on the retail stores as well, as well, because the volumes on the retail stores are bigger than the online sales that we are having right now. Uh, we also like are selling on other platforms like eBay, Etsy, Walmart. Uh, but like we want, we are willing to and trying to increase sales on those platforms as well because uh, we want to reduce our dependence on Amazon because right now mm -hmm. like 90% of our sales comes from Amazon, but we don't want to uh, depend on them that much. We just want to like put our eggs on different baskets. So mm -hmm. uh, for uh, within the three to five years, uh, that's our main goal actually. We want to get into the retail stores as much as we can. Right now we have some retail stores that purchase from us in, from New, in New York and other cities as well. But I think we are in Texas and we are selling a lot of cowboy hats and we have really fun stuff. So maybe we can get some uh, with this uh, conversation interview, maybe we can get some business owners interested in our, uh, purchasing our products. Yeah, definitely. That's a really great goal. You know, this has been 
so much fun just like having this conversation with y'all and and hearing your journey so far. And I'd I'd love to kind of dive into some rapid fire questions. And so uh, these are just quick top of mind answers and feel free to, uh, there's four of them. So um, if you each want to take two, that works for me. Uh, so let's start with the first one. Uh, it is what is a key to success for you? Uh, I would say you it's, go first? it's it's over delivering. So we, like all of, all of our products are um, over delivering. Like so so you want to buy a product, we send it with with something else that that that's like like a compliment. And then you you wouldn't you wouldn't really think about the product first, but then when you get it, you you will look at it and it's just like it makes so much sense and you love it. So that's what we that, that's what what tripled our revenue year over year for the last couple of years. Mm, for example, I can one. give an example for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say you bought a straw hat online. You would only get one headband on top of it. Like that's that's on it. But when you purchase it from us, you will probably get two more headbands that can fit with your different outfits. So you can basically change it and use it with different outfits. So I think that's really, for, for a woman, that's really important mm -hmm. thing because that they love to dress up and change the like having one hat with different, uh, combine it with different uh, different. Uh, things would be a good thing for them. So I think this is one of the things I would give an example. Oh, I like that. Yeah, some variety. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, what is one piece of advice you have for other business owners? Um, don't rush it. I think, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't rush it. And uh, know the numbers. Mm -hmm. Know that <laughs> whether you're making profit or loss and just keep working hard, like as hard as you can. Um, grow stable, not aggressively. I don't think that's a good idea because then you grow to one, two, three years from the beginning, but then you start to realize that it's not it's not healthy. So you're trying to find ways to make it stable. Very true. Uh, so what is a piece of content or book, podcast, anything that you're reading right now that's impacted you? I think the shoe dog, I just mentioned that. I just read it and <laughs> it just reminded me of our story. And like not only the challenges that he faces, but also there are a lot of different outcomes that I we, we can learn from him and uh, his journey. So mm -hmm. definitely I would say shoe dog. I would recommend it. Awesome. And a final question we have is uh, if you, and this one both of you can answer too, because it might be really different. We'll see. Um, if you had to choose only one area of business you could immediately improve tomorrow, what would it be? Optimize the business, uh, use as many as tools to make it like a lot easier to, to run the business. I would say mm -hmm. we talk about it all the time. Let's, let's, let's use more automation in our business because that's what makes it easier for, for us. Yeah. Yeah. Having all the nuts and bolts perfectly aligned means more time to focus on creating new items and fun stuff for our customers. Right. Well, very cool. Well, this has been so good. And I'd love to get, uh, before we get to the final question of the day, I'd love to hear like, how can people connect with you and find you and find your products? You can, you can do funcredible, funcredible.net or uh, you can, you can find us on FAIR, uh, the, the wholesale platform FAIR and just go there and, and put funcredible. Or you can just email us at info at metreu. M A T R E U dot com. Or awesome. if you're just like a regular person and if you want to buy cool hats or cool costume accessories for Halloween or for your upcoming event, you can just go on Amazon or any platform and you will definitely find us there. You can just search Funcredible and boom, we are there. Great. Well, definitely excited to check out some of your stuff for sure. Uh, so final question for the day for both of you, what is most inspiring to you today? Actually talked about this, like we were thinking that like I was thinking of having this question at some point. So I think we have the same uh, thing that inspires us today, which is walking into the major stores like Walmart, Target and seeing our products on those uh, stores shelves. And seeing that, like that would that would make me feel like really happy. So that's when I wake up, I just like, I'm just like working towards that goal. So that's inspiring me the most. I even I even have the the Instagram post ready 
in my mind, I'll just go in front of them and take a picture of it and share <laughs> with a with a probably good quote, uh, something related to success or anything. <laughs> I'm just waiting for that day to happen. I love it. You're manifesting it. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. well, definitely. <laughs> Well, thank you both for being on the show today. It's just been so inspiring and so much fun to hear your story. So thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you for having thank us you, thank you, and giving us the opportunity. Okay.